Sine 36 is an odd value of sine. It's weird. It's not 0, 30, 45, 60, or 90, and it's not clear how to use any of the identities to find it out, but I'm going to show you how. So what we're going to do is we're going to observe two fundamental tricks. Trick number one is that 36 is special because what is 5 times 36? It's 180. So if I write out sine of 180, that is going to equal to sine of 5 times 36. Furthermore, sine of 180 is actually zero because here's the original definition of sine and cosine. We have that the x coordinate is cosine theta and the y coordinate is sine theta if you take the point on the unit circle which subtends an angle of theta with the x axis. So in particular, if you're looking at the angle of 180 degrees, you're looking at this point here and its x coordinate is going to be minus one, its y coordinate is going to be zero because it's on the x axis. So therefore sine of 180 is going to be zero. That's straight from the definition. Okay, so sine of 180 is going to be zero, which is sine of five times 36. But what do we do next? 5 times 36 is 180. Well, we're going to use a cool identity for sine of 5 theta. Okay, so how are we going to do that? Well, sine of 5 theta is going to equal to using the trigonometric angle sum formulas. Okay, so there's sine of a plus b, there's a formula which looks like sine of a plus b is equal to sine a cosine b plus cosine a sine b. Okay, so this is a fundamental formula for sine. So using that formula repeatedly, you can split 5 theta as 2 theta plus 3 theta, then 2 theta as theta plus theta, and 3 theta as 2 theta plus theta. You get the picture. And eventually you can write everything in terms of sine theta and cosine squared theta. And it'll turn out that cosine squared theta is 1 minus sine squared theta. So all in all, I'm going to do this at the end of the video to show you exactly how it is in a cool way using Euler's theorem. Okay, so watch till the end for that. But I'm going to tell you what the formula ends up being, and it follows from this identity repeatedly applied. And the formula ends up being, so sine of 5 theta ends up equaling to the following cool expression. It is 16 sine to the 5 theta minus 20 sine cubed theta plus 5 times sine theta. That's what we're going to get. Okay, so it's a cool expression in terms of powers of sine. Why is this all so cool? Because knowing what sine of 5 theta is, means that we get an equation 0 equals sine of 5 times 36. Well, put theta is 36. And then we see that if theta is 36, because sine of 180 is 0, we're going to get that this is going to equal to sine 16 sine power 5 theta, where theta is 36. Okay, so 16 sine power 5 theta minus 20 sine cubed theta plus 5 sine theta, where theta is equal to 36 degrees. And that's super cool because now we know that sine of 36 is a solution of an equation. And what is that equation? I'm going to put y is equal to sine theta. So y is equal to, or y is equal to sine of 36 here, where theta is 36. And now we're going to get the equation 16y to the 5 minus 20y cubed plus 5 times y is equal to 0. That's the equation we want to solve for y. So we've now reduced finding sine to solving that equation for y. And okay, so this is a fifth degree equation. Looks a bit bad, right? I mean, fifth degree equations cannot in general even be solved in a nice expression in terms of arithmetic and radicals. So how are we going to solve this? Well, it's a pretty special fifth degree equation. You can sort of see that y factors into the left-hand side. There's no constant term. So we can make it a fourth degree equation. We can cancel y from both sides. So if we cancel y from both sides of the equation, we get 16y to the 4 minus 20y squared plus 5 is equal to 0. But why could we cancel y from both sides? Well, y was sine of 36, and we know sine of 36 is not 0. If you remember the unit circle picture, 36, unless it's on the x-axis, it's not going to be 0. So sine of 36 is not 0, so we can cancel and get this equation. Again, it's a fourth degree equation, but there's a beautiful trick for fourth degree equations, which we kind of learn at some point. Um, if you haven't, don't worry, I'm going to show it to you. It's really cool. Because it's only, there's no coefficients of the cube of y and of y, you can make a substitution. Okay, this is a quadratic equation in y squared. So what you can do is you can say u equals to y squared, and then the equation becomes 16u squared minus 20u plus 5 is equal to 0. Now we've got a quadratic. That is super cool. We can solve for u and then find out what y is. So let's do that. And this is why this is so fun, because it turns out that, first of all, it was so important that sine of 180 was 0. Otherwise, it would have been hard to do this, because we would have had a constant term in the fifth degree equation. And then second of all, it turns out to be a nice enough fifth degree equation that we can do this trick. So it's not so obvious, but it works. And now once we've got this far, we can use the quadratic formula. 
So what does the quadratic formula tells us? It tells us that u is equal to minus the coefficient. So you can actually write out the coefficients in the quadratic formula. It's going to be minus of minus 20. So it's going to be 20 plus or minus the square root of 20 squared. So that's 400 minus 4 times 16 times 5. 4 times 16 times 5 is 4 times 5 is 20. 20 times 16 is 320. So it's going to be minus 320 divided by 2 times the first coefficient of u squared, which is going to be 32. OK, so I've got that far. Let's simplify it. OK, it's pretty fun. Now we're getting somewhere. We're going to make it really nice. OK, so let's simplify this. We get 20 plus or minus the square root of 80 divided by 32. And I want you to drop a comment down below. This plus or minus, which one is the solution going to be? How do we figure that out? OK, we'll see that in the video. But drop a comment down below if you have thoughts. But now we've got 20 plus or minus root 80 by 32. So again, you know, to simplify the radical, factor out something. Okay, so 80 is 4 times 20. Okay, so or it's 16 times 5. Okay, so we get 20 plus or minus the square root of 16 times 5 divided by 32. And if it's that, then what you can do is you can take out the square root of 16. Okay, square root of 16 is 4. That's nice enough. And we can cancel something off from the numerator and denominator. So let's just do that. And while I'm doing that, I want you to, as I said, think about which solution it is and also try to see if you can understand the sine power 5 theta identity in your own way. That's also important. But here we've got 20 plus or minus root 16 times 5. So what we do is we get 20 plus or minus 4 times the square root of 5. So 20 plus or minus 4 times the square root of 5 divided by 32. So now we can divide top and bottom by 4. We can cancel 4 rather on top and bottom. And we're just going to get 5 plus or minus root 5 divided by 8. So that's going to be our answer for u equals y squared. Okay, so y, remember, was sine of 36. So this is going to be sine of 36 squared. Okay, so now we're almost there. We're almost at the end of sine of 36 squared. Um, but which solution do we take? 5 plus root 5 or 5 minus root 5? Well, the way I like to think about it is 5 plus root 5 is going to be root 5 is something more than 2. Okay, that's all we need to know because root 4 is 2. So 5 plus root 5 is going to be something more than 7. So it's 7 over 8 if we use the plus sign. But 7 over 8 is pretty close to 1. And sine of 36, if you remember the unit circle picture, it's kind of 36 degrees is closer to 0. So sine of 36 cannot be that close to 1. OK, so that's the, that's the rough idea. Well, it's a pretty precise idea as well. And now what we do is we can actually say that therefore, sine of 36 squared has to in fact be um, 5 minus the square root of 5 by 8. Okay, that's the value we're going to choose because the other value was too big. And now, therefore, we get what the sine of 36 is. So I'm just going to unveil that on the board. And next, we're going to explain the sine power 5 theta formula, which is pretty cool. I'm going to show it to you using complex numbers. And if you haven't seen Euler's theorem yet, don't worry, but I will kind of show you. And I recommend watching out videos on my channel on complex numbers to explain it in more depth. But actually, now we get this theorem. So you can sort of say this is a theorem that sine of 36 is going to equal to um, the square root of 5 minus root 5 over 8. OK, so square root of 5 minus root 5 over 8. And if you like, square root of 5 minus root 5 over 8, root 8 is going to be root 4 times root 2, which is 2 root 2. So you can get this is the square root of 5 minus root 5 divided by 2 root 2. And that's going to be the magic value of sine of 36. And now, why is that formula for sine power 5 true in the first place? So how we can work that out is we basically remember Euler's formula that e power i theta equals cosine theta plus i sine theta. OK, so that's Euler's formula. So e power i 5 theta, so e power i 5 theta, OK? So powering by 5, right? e power i 5 theta is e power i theta power 5, which is equal to cosine theta plus i sine theta power 5. But that is also equal to, because e power i 5 theta using the top equation, that's cosine of 5 theta plus i sine of 5 theta. So it's cosine of 5 theta plus i sine of 5 theta. And now what we can do is we can use the, or we can use, we can compare the imaginary parts to find out a formula for sine 5 theta. And the imaginary parts are going to correspond to using the generalized binomial theorem you know, you're going to take a power of i sine theta that is odd. That's going to give you an i, because even powers of i become real. OK, so we take, for example, we first of all, we power cosine theta by um, 4, and we power i sine theta by 1. OK, so I'm just going to write that out. So the imaginary part, what is the imaginary part of cosine of theta 
plus i sine theta power 5. What is the imaginary part of that? Well, that's just going to equal to, well, I mean, you, as I said, so you take cosine theta times i sine theta, or cosine theta power 4 times i sine theta. So it's going to be i times cosine power 4 theta times sine theta. Then you're going to look at the third power of i sine theta. So the third power of i sine theta, and this is going to be with a coefficient of 5, right? Because it's 5 choose 1 times um, cosine power 4 theta times sine theta. And then the next one is going to be um, with a coefficient for the i sine theta cubed, it's going to be 5 choose 3 as the coefficient. But it's going to be a negative sign because i cubed is going to be negative i. So it's negative 10i, so it's going to be negative 10. I factored out the i. Negative 10 times cosine squared theta times sine cubed of theta. That's all good. And then the last one is going to be i sine theta power 5 and cosine theta power 0. Okay, and that's not going to have any coefficient. Its coefficient is going to be 1. i sine theta power 5 is going to be i times sine power 5 theta. So since we factored out the i, it's going to be plus sine power 5 theta. That's going to be the formula. And now what we can do is we can use the trig identity that cosine squared theta is 1 minus sine squared theta to finally figure out everything. And this is a cool part of it. So what is cosine squared theta? It's 1 minus sine squared theta. That's the cosine squared plus sine squared identity equals 1, which is the Pythagorean theorem. I've got a video on the Pythagorean theorem, how to prove it as well. So check it out. Link's in the description. It's on my channel. But here what you can do is you can now work out that cosine squared theta is going to equal to 1 minus sine squared theta. So therefore, you're going to get i times 5 times 1 minus sine squared theta squared times sine theta minus of 10 times 1 minus sine squared theta um, times sine cubed theta plus sine power 5 theta. Okay, that's going to be the answer. And now we can actually keep simplifying this. So we can keep simplifying this. We're going to now get, um, this is going to be i times, so I use the binomial theorem here, 5 minus 2 sine squared theta plus sine power 4 theta. Okay, so it's going to be 5 times, um, so it's going to be 5 minus, I'm just going to do this, 10 sine, sine power 4 theta, uh, or 10 sine squared theta um, plus 5 sine power 4 theta uh, multiplied by sine theta. And then I'm going to subtract 10 times 1 minus sine squared theta times sine cubed theta. So again, this is a calculation I recommend doing, doing playing along while we're doing it, but then you're going to get minus um, 10 times sine cubed theta um, plus 10 times sine power 5 theta. And then finally, you're going to get plus sine power 5 theta. Well, here, you know, you've got, you're just going to get, I'm just going to forget the i, so I'm going to say i times, so we're going to get 5 times this, so it's going to be 5 sine theta uh, minus 10 sine cubed theta plus 5 times sine power 5 theta um, minus 10 times sine cubed theta plus 10 times sine power 5 theta plus sine power 5 theta. Pretty cool, pretty cool that we've got this far. And now we can just do some simplification, okay? So this is going to be i times, so you're going to get um, minus 20 sine cubed theta, we're going to get um, 16 sine power 5 theta, so we're going to get what we want. 16 sine power 5 theta minus 20 sine cubed theta plus 5 sine theta, um, 5 sine theta. And that's going to be our formula. That's going to be the sine of 5 theta, i times sine of 5 theta, because remember we had e power i 5 theta was e power i theta power 5. So this is going to be i times sine of 5 theta. So that's going to be our formula for sine 5 theta. I hope you loved that video. I wanted to be complete. I've explained everything using Euler's theorem. So check out my um, video. I did another video on Euler's theorem as well. So check it out and um, explaining how you can derive the trig angle sum formula using Euler's theorem like we did here, but a very special case of that. And I've got lots of content on my channel at all levels of math. So please don't forget to check it out. Like and subscribe. I'm creating a library of elite infinite free math education for everyone. I want everyone to love and benefit from math. And all kinds of math every week, you've got all different kinds of topics coming to you. Share with your friends, family, students, classmates, and spread the word to support my vision of helping as many people as possible through my channel. Drop a comment down below on your thoughts on this video, or any thoughts you had or questions that I asked during the video. And I'm super excited to see you in the next video.